Hello, and you're very, very welcome. It's Roisin here, Roisin Curie, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about a wonderful weekend I've just had of sketching and drawing outdoors. I'm talking about Kinvara Plein Air 2024 in South County Galway. It's day two, it's evening, and everybody's milling around having a nice glass of wine and chatting about the day. It's Saturday, there are already pictures up in galleries and on racks and in frames across the quay from the day before. So the festival started on Friday. and We've had a fabulous day here on Saturday. It's been sunny all day. I'm not going to say warm because we're just not having that kind of summer, but it's been heavenly. And the tide has gone out now, but earlier in the day, there were boys and girls on paddle boards in the water, splashing around and having a wonderful time. So here's one of my demos from earlier and it's, I don't know, no great shakes. And here is a little demo of a tree because I was trying to show how uh, trees are always kind of darker at the bottom. Sorry, that's my little mic dangling in the way there. And then I just felt like doing something quick. So I did this little one of the boat and the tide earlier and that was really fun. So that's all I have to show you for the moment, but I'm going to be painting for the next couple of days, so hopefully I'll have something nice to share with you then. I didn't know it at the time when I started drawing these green boats, but they held a very special significance to the village of Kinvara. A German guy called Reiner Krauss came over to Kinvara in the early 60s and he made it his home. He lived and fished there for all those years. He'd died earlier in the week and his last journey was made along the quay on Saturday afternoon, accompanied by a piper. And it really was very moving as the hearse drove past and the crowds lined the street, past sketchers who were painting his boats. Day three took place down at the flaggy shore near Linala Ice Cream. And I wasn't teaching, I was leading a paint out. I'm here at Flaggy Shore, just close to Linala ice cream where I bought this little cake by the way lovely little pear cake little pear and almond tart and uh, I'm looking forward to that in a minute so I'm doing the shore but the tide is coming in rapido so whoops so what I'm starting with is the water because the rocks won't go anywhere and my painting friends are all up there up on the on the edge on the actual road because they've got easels and things so it's not exactly sketch friendly i do have one friend ruben that's my little man ruben and uh, it's kind of cold but it's really sunny so i'll take that look my god i better get going because the sea is going to come and drown me in a minute so anyway here we go and i will let you know how i get on very soon as you can see the tide has come roaring in the sun is beginning to go in a little bit. It's probably just behind a cloud. So I've changed my kind of um, viewpoint, not viewpoint, but I've changed my shoreline a little bit. And I haven't done the sky, but that's because I can do the sky any time. And uh, well, I'm going to leave it at that and I'm going to head back up. I'll do a little bit more and then I'll head back up to the road and then I can do my sky at my leisure. So I've got the sky in now. So it's not the most amazing painting in the world, but it was fun. So here's the final piece. What I like about it is the little flecks of white surf on the sea. After I did that one, I moved position and found some cows to draw. Okay, so we're just finishing up our little bit of plein air sketching out here and the wind is howling, a gale, and we've had a beautiful couple of hours but it's beginning to get a little bit threatening now. And here's what I've come up with. It's just a little scene to remember the morning. It's uh, nothing spectacular, but great fun and great company. And uh, on to the next one. I'm gonna chat to you later. So here's my little picture of the cows and the wildflowers and all the rest of it. I really enjoyed painting beside some of the other plein air artists. It was a great morning. And later that day, there was an auction to raise money for charity, a couple of really good causes in Kinvara.
Now, I can't bear to be around when my work is sold or auctioned because it would just be too embarrassing if nobody wanted my work. So I actually stood a little to the side and strained to hear what was going on. And to my relief, there was a little bit of a, a bidding war. There was a couple of people bidding against each other. And to my joy, my painting was bought by the very wonderful Hilary, who'd come all the way from Cambridge, Massachusetts for the weekend. And it was a joy to get to know Hilary. And such an honour that she bought my painting. Of the two boats that we sketched together side by side. The last day of the festival, day four, took place in the grounds of Thor Bally Lee, known as Yates Tower. It was owned by the poet W.B. Yates in the 1920s. Well, it's day three of Kinvara Plein Air 2024. And I've just arrived in the grounds of Thor Bally Lee, which is where W.B. Yates lived for 10 years in the 1920s. So I'm going to take you along the path a little bit. This is where we're going to paint today and there's some amazing places to do and maybe not the toilet block so let's just move quickly on. I've come here so many times in fair weather and foul and it's just fab. Sorry about the um, bumpy camera by the way um, I do have at least one gimbal and at least one of them is still in the box with the cellophane on it and everything look at this wait till you see this now this is the tower and I guess Yates probably came on a beautiful day in summer and uh, with his wife and was like right we're going to buy that place I do know that he wanted for a long time to have like a seat you know he was a great Irish poet he was a great poet period. I mean, he was, he was astounding in his poetry. And I'm not a poetry person, but you can't read Yeats's poetry without feeling his genius. So I, I like to think of him sitting at the window of the tower and fishing. I think this is called, oh, I can't remember the name of it, Streamstown. That sounds a bit kind of Disney, doesn't it? Streamstown River. Um, that couldn't be right. Anyway, let's have a look at this. Now this beautiful place does have one drawback. Look at that, look at that reflection. Oh my Lord. I'm gonna to have to teach reflections today. I was gonna do something else, but I'm gonna to have to include reflections, haven't I? One way or another. Um, yeah, the one drawback this place has is that it floods in the winter. And in recent years with the flooding getting worse, I'm not sure if it's still getting worse, but it was very bad for a few years. The whole area, the, the tower, Everything had to be closed and it remained closed for a very long time, like years. Here's the little cottage that I think Yates built. Not sure. But anyway, the water was like right up to the eaves of the little cottage. This place is going to be mobbed in about 25 minutes with tons and tons of painters. And um, I'm looking forward to sitting, sitting with them and chatting about fun ways to capture the place. Let me see if I can get a long shot of this one. Look at this, it's so tranquil. Little gate. How do I open this now? Sorry, I'm not the world's best cinematographer, filmographer, whatever the word is. Oh, there's a car. What do you know? So there you go. That's where we're going to be today. And uh, I can't wait to get something on. I'm thinking of getting 
the students to do like little vignettes to tell the story of this place and uh, and just choose a very limited palette. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to seeing these people. They're a really nice bunch um, so far. I've met some of them already. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have some creative fun today. So I'll catch up with you in a little bit. So my workshop is over, my third and final workshop. And I've had a really special time with some of my workshop students. And I'm going to tell you what I mean by that in a second. But first of all, I want to find the cockchafer. Ha 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 I know. The cockchafer inse insect that I was drawing earlier. Oh, there he is. Woohoo, I found him. How, that is incredible. I found my actual dead insect. I know I'm not supposed to touch him, but watch me touch him. So I want to show you what, what what he looks like because I want to show you what I did. So I'll just turn this off for a sec while I fetch out my book. One sec. So there's the critter. And there's my little drawing of the critter. And uh, And I was going to draw other stuff around to fill in the page you know like bits of tour belly lee like boop 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 the tower but now i'm thinking well i only have a couple of minutes left here anyway because i have to go to kinvara and uh, there's an exhibition on of all the work from the plenar weekend and also what's the other reason oh yeah well i only have about 10 minutes but also i was thinking wouldn't it be kind of cool to do like a page of insects and pretend that they were you know, like collected 19th century style and I'll label them up and everything. I thought that'd be kind of cool. Okay, I'm going to bring this cock chafer for a ride. He's up in my sketchbook now. It's, I shouldn't say, sugar. Okay, I just dropped my mic, so I hope that last audio was clean. You pity if it wasn't. So I'm still on the grounds of Tour Valley Lee. I don't know, can you hear the water trickling? So apparently, I just heard today, I don't know if it's true, but apparently W.B. Yeats' wife, George, she sold the place the minute he died. And who could blame her? Because I'd say it was a bit far away. I mean, imagine she probably couldn't even drive. Maybe she could. She probably could, actually. But anyway, who wants to be stuck in the middle of the backwoods of... County Galway, not I, says me. I am actually stuck in the backwoods of Galway. That is my lot in life. You get a lot of reward in return for living in the backwoods of Galway because you have all these special places like Tour Valley Lee. I can hear a car coming down there. Well, they're not coming down here. Is it I going to tell you that for nothing? fellow with a cigarette dangling out of his mouth. Somehow I don't think he's going sketching. Which is probably, you know, tobacconist, racist against tobacco smokers. And, uh, no, he's gone the other way. He might just be a farmer. Anyway, so um, I guess this place is full of fish because I often see uh, fish leaping further down the river. So we've had a lovely day. It's been a bit cold, but I was warmly dressed. And that is the extent of my drawing today. Which is not great. Oh, my cockchafer is gone. Oh. oh, he's fallen down. Oh, well. Probably fallen down my front somewhere. That'll teach me, won't it? To go around carrying huge dead insects with me. Look at, I'm going to, um, I'm going to walk up here for a second. See, now I'm worried I'm going to step on the cockchafer. There's one thing dropping it. There's quite another thing standing on it. All right, so I'll sign off now and I'll just take you for one last glance around the grounds. Okay, see you in a sec. This is the garage that belonged to WB Yates. Apparently, he had a racing car tucked away in there. And uh, yeah, he had a fast car. Mr. Yates driving up and down the roads of Galway. Well, I hope he enjoyed himself. 
And I'm going to show you this little plaque up here, which says, let's see what it says. Uh, it says, the, I, the poet William Yates, with old mill boards and sea green slates, and smithy work from the Gort Forge, restored this tower for my wife George, and may these characters remain when all is ruin once again. Which is very appropriate because, as I mentioned earlier, the place was underwater many, many times in its recent history. So this says, Thor Bali Lee restored and opened to the public in 1965 through the efforts of the Kiltartan Society, presided over by the late Mrs. Mary Hanley. Thor Bali, Thor Bali Lee, home of WDB Yates Interpretive Centre, officially opened by Michael Butler Yates, 10th of July 1989, an Ireland West tourism project. But they didn't reckon with the flipping floods, so they didn't. So here's the, I don't know, maybe it's their garden. And their little cottage, where no doubt Mr. Yates hallowed all the good people who would have passed by. Although I did hear that apparently all he was doing was muttering to himself when people passed him. So I say goodbye and see you later. Bye from Tour Balili. It's time to make my way back to Kinvara for the exhibition of all the work done over the last four days. Well, it's all over. I've just been to the exhibition and the quay is now deserted of painters. Look at that, the sun's coming out, isn't that nice? It's, it's turned into a lovely afternoon and we haven't had a drop of rain, well, maybe a drop, but literally a drop all weekend. Well, I'm leaving you with this little picture of a bog and there's a very, there's a very good reason why I'm leaving you with this kind of slightly mental picture. Sometimes people can feel a little bit intimidated by the idea of thinking of yourself as an artist or seeing people going around with easels and you might feel like a bit of, of an imposter. But I can assure you, it's not like that. You draw what you like, you paint what you like, you sketch what you like. I didn't sketch Yeats's beautiful tower and the beautiful thatched cottage. I sketched a dead bug I found on the road because I sketch what I like, what catches my eye. So do that. Enjoy it. It's yours to enjoy to do. But do sketch. Thanks for watching and I hope you really enjoyed sharing this little, this little experience of Kinvara Plein Air 24 with me. See you next time.